I'm still speaking on how to sustain your salvation experience, how to sustain salvation experience. I told you that two heart conditions need to be maintained. And, um, and that is the broken heart and the contrite heart. Let me read Psalm 51, verses 17, no, 16 and 17 again. But for the sake of time, let me just take verse 17. It says, the sacrifice of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. This, O God, you will not despise. So I told you in the last broadcast that a broken and a contrite heart is needful for one to be saved. And it's also needful for one to maintain one salvation. Two heart conditions, a broken and a heart and a contrite heart, they are just one, one heart condition. It's just one heart condition, two-sided, broken, then contrite. It's just a single heart. So the second heart condition is a tender heart. Now, before I go to show you a uh, tender heart, I will need to start by telling you how heart, how the unbroken heart can become broken and contrite. The instruments that God used to achieve that, they are just two, the word of God and the Holy Spirit. Jeremiah, follow me to the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah 23, 29. Those are the two divine instruments that makes the heart broken and the uh, contrite. Jeremiah 23, 29. God says, Is not my word like a fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces? The word of God is like hammer. Yes, it's like fire. It breaks the rock. If your heart is hard as rock, the word of God is potent enough to break your heart. Yes, that is if you will not resist the walking of the word of God. In First Thessalonians, in First Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 5 to 7, you see how the heart of the Thessalonian uh, believers were made broken and contrite. Verses 5 to 7, chapter 1, 1 Thessalonians. For our gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in power. You see now, the word of God and the power of God. And in the Holy Spirit and in much assurance, as you know what kind of men we were among you for your sake. And you became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Spirit, so that you became examples to all in Macedonia and Achaia who believe. Now, again, come to Hebrews 4, verse 12. I'm dealing with the instruments by which the heart is broken and the spirit is made contract. Hebrews 4 12 says, For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. That's what God uses. So God uses his word and his spirit to break the heart and to make the spirit contrite. Now, I want to show you the tender heart. That is the second heart condition. The tender heart. So the tender heart is keeping the broken and the contrite heart tender, making that heart that God has made to be broken and the spirit made contrite to be soft. So one has to maintain a tender heart to maintain continuous salvation experience. Don't forget, I have told you once in one of the broadcasts that salvation is intense. We are saved in the past. We have been saved now in the present and we shall be saved in the future. So for us to experience continuous salvation experience, 
we need to maintain a tender heart. The possibility of losing the tenderness of the heart is high. Yes, is high. Ignorance of this is the reason why many saints have lost the presence of God in their lives. So you can lose the presence of God that you will no longer see God's presence with you any longer. Yes, they are only left with formalism and nominalism for the power of endless life has been lost. Your heart cannot be hard and you experience the, uh, uh, the power of endless life. So that is the reason for us to maintain a tender heart. Some believers posed as though they have broken heart, but never truly experience it. A man's heart may be wounded, and yet his heart is not broken. So was the heart of Pharaoh and Ahab. You will see, come with me to Exodus chapter 10. Exodus chapter 10. There are many people that they only have their heart wounded, but not really broken. Now, in Exodus chapter 10, verse 16, come to see Pharaoh. Verse 16. Then Pharaoh called, called for Moses and Aaron in his and said, I have sinned against the Lord, your God, and against you. That was a wounded heart. You would think that Pharaoh had repented, but he did not. Come again to the experience of Ahab too. In 1 Kings chapter 21, verse 27, you see the same thing. Pharaoh did not repent. That was why he perished at last. 21, 27. So it was when Ahab had those words, that is, when Elijah told him what will happen to him. Hmm. Look at the word of God. He tore his clothes and put sackcloth on his body and fasted and lay in sackcloth and went about mourning. That was a wounded heart. So Pharaoh and Ahab, they confess their sin, but they never have a broken heart. The same thing was Saul. Saul, Saul the first king of Israel, also confessed his sin. Even Judas, Judas himself repented of his doing. He went to return the money he collected from the high priest from the elders of Israel, from those religious leaders. He went, to, but he did not, he just went to go and hang himself. That's what we are talking about. So it is possible that your heart is only wounded and you are not, you do not have a broken heart and a contrite spirit. So the same thing happened to Esau. Esau also had his heart wounded, but none of these men, Pharaoh, he have saw the first king of Israel, Judas Iscariot, and even so, none of them truly experience a broken heart. None of them. Even so, cried with, 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 uh, bitterly. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 15 to 16, told us, he missed it gallantly. He failed woefully, simply because his heart was only wounded, not made broken or Contrite. So it is a broken heart and a contrite uh, and a contrite spirit that can be made tender. I will need us to read the scripture, then I pray. Mm. Come to first Samuel. Come to first Samuel. I just want you to look at the example of Samuel. No, Saul, uh, Judas, and uh, what is his what is his name now? Esau. Now, for Samuel, for Samuel, for Samuel chapter, for Samuel chapter 26, for Samuel chapter 26. Look at, look at Saul and verse 21. Look at Saul. Then Saul said, I have sinned. Return my son, David, for I will have you no more because my life was precious in your eyes this day. Indeed, I have played the fool and heard exceedingly. We have people that they are leaders in Christendom, that their life is like this soul. Sometimes they acknowledge their sin, but they will not change in their evil ways. Come again to Judas. Matthew 27. Matthew 27. 
Verse 3. If your heart is like this, that you've never been made broken and contrite, let alone your heart will be now be tender. Because it is only a broken heart and a, and a contrite spirit that can become tender. That is the rule of engagement. Matthew 27. Now look at verse 3. Look at verse 3. Then Judas is betrayer, seeing that he had been condemned, was remorseful. There is difference between repentance and remorsefulness. Remorsefulness is regret of the action you have done. So regretted. But he never repented. Because if you repent, you will stop your misbehavior. And you turn to God. Not that you will just be saying, Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. And you still continue in your obstinacy. That was the experience of Pharaoh. It is not when you are experiencing the anger of God that you say, okay, I am responsible. That's why we always say, miracles and judgment does not make people to repent. Yes. You can have miracle now and you say, oh, God is good, God is good. And you still go on your way. And God can bring his anger upon a man. Yet he can be remorseful. Yet he will, not be, he will not repent. So there can never be repentance when the heart is not broken and the spirit made contrite. And brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders. That was restitution. This brother restituted. Yet his heart was not broken. Because if his heart was broken, he would repent, he would just face Christ. Do you remember the thief? One of the thieves on the cross said, Jesus, I know. I, am, I deserve what they have done to me. I have done you. I have done wickedly. I deserve this one. Said, but remember me in your kingdom. Why didn't Judas turn to Christ? He also would have been saved. Come to Hebrews. Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 2, verses 15 to 16. He said, and release those who through fear of death were, no, this is not chapter 2. Hebrews 12. Yeah, Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12. Is anybody the local? Hebrews 12. 15 to 16. Yeah. Now, come to Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews 12, verses 15 to 16. Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble, and by this many become defied. Lest there be any fornicator or proven person like so, who for one muscle of food sold his birthright. Look at the word of God. For you know that afterward, when he wanted to inherit the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place for repentance. Though he sought it diligently with tears. Sometimes you can be shedding tears and it is a crocodile tears. Please bow your head. Lord, I allow the ministry of your word and the ministry of your Holy Spirit to achieve brokenness in my heart and contrite and the contrite of my spirit. I want my heart to be made broken and my spirit to be made contrite. Do your work. Let this journey work be done so that my repentance will be genuine. My heart indeed will be broken and my spirit will be contrite and I may experience the revival of God and the salvation of God. Thank you, Lord, because you have done it. In Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that you show mercy to your people as many who have believed in Christ, but yet their heart remain unbroken. May you, by the power of your word and by the power of your spirit, make their hearts broken and make their spirits contrite. Thank you because you have done it. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. 
We believe you have been blessed by the word of God you just heard. For further help or counsel, call this number 0806-615-6208 or 0703-284-4129. Join us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Strago Media for more spiritual messages. Or visit our website at www.stragomedia.com to download those messages for free. Thank you for staying to the end of this program. Join us again, same station, same time next week. God bless you.